Okay, folks, we got a question from Noam. Why do you think that to this day people use the bodybuilding methods, that is, attacking the shoulders or pecs from three different directions to failure, isolation, etc., if the big compound lifts and movements work best? Boy, that is a delightful question, but let's finish up because it's going to be one answer here. Isn't using the most effective method the best thing to do, <laughs> which ultimately triumphs? Noam, we need to talk about all kinds of things in life. Uh, why historically or theologically do you think it's still so prevalent? And there's the, you nailed it right there. First off, why do people slam their face against the wall? You know, I taught high school a long time and I have some friends now. I'm a little bit older. I'm not, I'm not in that time anymore. But I have friends who have teenagers. And you'll sit down with a teenager. Or, you know, they'll say... I just can't believe what my kid is doing. The kid is uh, smoking dope, uh, watching internet all night, not sleeping. The grades are terrible. They're not going to get into college. Mm, yeah. So don't we all know, is this is very probably more true for the Americans listening, but don't we all kind of know in the United States that there's this little kind of period in your life where you make the most important decisions of your life now, you can fix them later, but it's geometrically more difficult to go to college in your 30s than it is in your 20s. And uh, I would say it goes this way when you're 40s and your 50s trying to get that bachelor's degree or GED. Generally, even if you tell somebody, you grab them by the collar and go, listen to me, <laughs> you know better, they still do it wrong. Um, somebody asked me the secret to uh, financial success. And I said, well, number one, remain a virgin until 35. Uh, number two, um, get as many degrees as you can, uh, before the age of 21, uh, never drink, uh, never socialize, uh, and, and invest all, I mean, 70% of your money from age 18 to age 34, then live your life. And then they say, well, that doesn't sound very fun. Oh, I thought you wanted financial success versus fun. Welcome to the balance. So you ask a good question. I just lovingly, and I mean the word lovingly, wrote the foreword to Dave Draper's new book. And it is an honor. Um, Dave is was my hero in my youth. I got to know him. And as many of you may or may not know, um, He's has some, he has some health issues, and let's hope for the best. But in my forward, he asked Zabo a good question, and uh, what's the best exercise for biceps? Curls. Oh, uh, chest, incline pinch, uh, triceps, overhead press, uh, legs, squats, back, deadlift. Nothing's changed since 1964. We all know that the big lifts are the best thing. If you're getting ready for a contest, a bodybuilding contest, there probably is some value, though some people argue this is not true, of doing isolation work. One of the reasons you want to do isolation work as you're getting close to a contest or a photo shoot is that you're dieting so hard. You know, you are drastically cutting your calories. When I help a guy get ready for Mr. Utah years ago, his last month, and you're going to hear what I'm about to say correctly, he survived on lettuce and marijuana. He was stoned constantly. I don't know how, how he ate that little. And when we were helping him work out, my job was to help pick him up off the floor and get him going again. When you're that shredded, that ripped, there's not a lot going on. There's not a lot of extra juice to work the brain panel. So to have someone squat heavy in that situation would really put them on the edge, I mean, of, of safety. But leg extension and leg curl, you could push them to the extreme and still be safe. I hope you heard, Noam, my point. If you are at the extremes of definition, getting ready for a contest or a photo shoot, compound exercises will probably, I'm sorry, pardon me, Isolation exercises are probably safer and better because you can push into the burn there without hurting yourself. 
You don't want to be in an exhausted state doing heavy deadlifts. You, you don't. That's just a recipe for disaster or heavy squats or heavy bench press. Um, I have a good friend, a, a thrower friend, who read an article one time that not using your thumbs on the bench press would help you bench press more. I so said, okay, did it. Weight slid off and hit him right here across the face. Massive. Uh, he has none of his original teeth anymore. And his jaw has been fixed twice. Um, imagine doing that in a depleted state. <laughs> then he might have caught it here and we wouldn't even be discussing him uh, in the living sense anymore. But to get there, so, so first, practically there are good reasons for isolation exercises. Practically. For the bulk of us, <laughs> the bulk of us, we just need the big, the big exercises. But in special cases, we need those isolations. Now, here's the issue. Some young lifter goes in and sees the program of a guy getting ready for Mr. America, and he says, well, that's what I need to do. With my 105-pound bench press, you know, I need to, you know, do the cable crossover stuff. No, you don't. You need to get that bench press up to 400 pounds. And trust me, you're going to look good. You ask a good question theologically here. In, in theology, you have a word called steno symbol. And steno symbol means a word with only one meaning. Uh, the word gay means happy. The word gay means happy. The word gay means happy. You can no longer sing the song, um, Don We Now Are Gay Apparel at a high school in America because the kids will laugh. Because there is a new steno symbol for the word gay. Um, when somebody says weightlifting, what most people think is the steno symbol bodybuilding. Now, this happened in 1975 with the publication of two things, two things, Pumping Iron the movie and the publication of Arnold, the Education of a Bodybuilder, which just blew up. Uh, it had to be one of the most influential, game-changing books in our sports history, our lifting's history, because it took... It took weightlifting and it blew it up uh, into all the mega gyms you see now. Uh, interesting at the same time, you know, you're going to get that first video cassette workouts invented by lover or hater Jane Fonda. So what's going to happen at this time is this idea of going for the burn. So go for the burn from the aerobic side and go from the burn from the bodybuilding side. And today... Uh, uh, actually, a, a, literally a generation later, this become the steno symbol of what we do. In reality, in your experience, will tell you that the basics will work better. You are pushing against a steno symbol, weightlifting is bodybuilding, weightlifting is bodybuilding, weightlifting is bodybuilding, that you're not going to be able to break out. So, Noam, it's a great question, and it's something I constantly deal with, constantly. If I say to a basketball team we're in weightlift, the first thing they do is do that. That's, that's the very first thing they do. If you ask my grandson Danny what I do in my gym, he'll go, that's a steno symbol. So one of the things you need to, to work on as a person is breaking out steno symbols. Uh, I'm the tail end of the baby boom. And one of the things I've noticed about baby boomers, <laughs> my daughters will say to me all the time, Oh, thanks, Boomer, or something like that, is that many Boomers love to live with a single steno symbol. If you mention a person in history, they will instantly have a phrase or a term that negates anything they did well. Um, one of the things you need to do is break out of steno symbol thinking and step back and look at the big picture. Uh, did John F. Kennedy have some flaws? Yes, yes, he did. Did Lyndon Johnson have flaws? Yes, yes, he did. But that doesn't mean you can ignore all the great things they did. Um, listen, everybody's got flaws, including me and including you, Noel. So our job is to constantly step back as coaches, trainers, and athletes and see the big picture and try to get back to what works. Great question. Thank you very much.